Hello and welcome to the studio. The topic of this video is drawing faces. Drawing faces just using lines. I used myself as a model in the in the drawing you just saw, which I think is an advantage because it's um, perhaps a little challenging to draw somebody else because you feel maybe you want to uh, you want to please them, you want to give them a good likeness of themselves, but hopefully the same would not apply to me. Well, I don't care really what the drawing looks like. I uh, have done self-portraits before and I do know that artists have the grumpy drawing face and my self-portraits always do look a little bit grim. But it really doesn't matter. I'm just here as a model to give myself pr some practice and of course I am available for as long as I want to draw for because I'm here drawing. Might as well put a mirror there and use my face as the model. That's one of the reasons why I think a lot of artists do self-portraits because, well, it's just for practice, just um, an available model, as I say. So um, to begin with, what I think we should do is to immerse ourselves in the work of artists who, um, who have produced, respected artists who have produced work that is similar to what we're aiming for. So I've looked for the examples of artists work where they've drawn faces just using lines and uh, first of all I'll show you <clears throat> these two beautiful drawings by David Hockney of his parents, his mother and his father His line drawings are inc incredibly effective. He does say something about line drawing. Here, I'll read it to you. He says, I never talk when I'm drawing a person, especially if I'm making line drawings. I prefer there to be no noise at all so I can concentrate more. You can't take a line too slowly. You have to go at a certain speed so the concentration needed is quite strong. What, uh, what I'll do after we've had a look at a few line drawings by respected artists is I'll suggest that um, you take some time to do some warm-up exercises, just making lines with different tools. But uh, here's an example of a line drawing by Cuffin Williams. where I said, maybe it looks as though the lines were made quite quickly in quite a loose way. So you can make the lines quickly, you can make them slowly. Here's another drawing by Cuffin Williams, a pencil drawing. There is some shading as well, but I think the main thing about this drawing is the strength of the lines. Turning to Matisse. I really adore Matisse's line drawings. I, I think they are, his use of line is quite breathtakingly, deceptively simple, but very carefully and slowly selected lines, which really sort of distill the essence of the subject that he's drawing. Um, that, that's not actually printed up very well. It's hard to tell what he used to make the line, maybe ink maybe pencil or charcoal, I don't know. But on this one, this is printed a lot better. Um, and it's charcoal drawing with some smudging. It seems as though he's made some lines and changed his mind and then perhaps just smudged them out and redrawn the shapes more clearly with a, with a firmer pressure of charcoal. So, to a little bit of mark making. A little bag of charcoal here and, uh, and a, a chopstick. I've got another chopstick dipped in some ink. What I'm going to do first is tape 
this piece of charcoal to the chopstick. I mean, you can make marks just with the charcoal. Sort of the feel of the, the charcoal in a way dictates the marks you make. In fact, I suppose all drawing implements dictate the marks you make to a certain extent. And also the way you hold them. When I pick a piece of charcoal up, I have a certain way of holding it. It's, it just comes naturally and you'll have your own way of holding it too. And this is the way Matisse used his charcoal quite frequently. I've seen videos of him um, with charcoal taped to the end of a really long stick, which gives a, um, the scope for making quite different lines. You, you can see how when I was holding the charcoal, I made much more sort of scratchy lines. This way, I get a completely different feeling. Um, it's almost telling me to make lines like Matisse's lines. <laughs> That's amazing. I could dip the charcoal into some ink. It's a really interesting way to make a, a beautiful line that goes from inky to smudgy. This could be a very enjoyable, slow exercise to really take your time over. Let's try the chopstick. Just dipped in ink. You could use a piece of bamboo or a twig out of the garden. Drag it on its side, it makes marks. Little choppy lines. Yeah, I think these, these remind me a bit of Van Gogh's drawings. You drew with ink and a, a nib or a stick maybe. And his lines kind of um, had similarities to the way he used marks with a brush and paint. Of course, he could you could stick to pencils. What's this? This is a two B pencil. Long straight lines, making lines quickly making really slow, considered lines. Of course, you don't have to have your paper up on a, an easel like I have got here. This is just so that I can film, that it's clearly visible to the camera. But you could hold your, your pad on your, <coughs> on, your, on your knee or have it on the table, or you could have it flat on the table and stand up to draw. Try different physical positions for drawing. This is not one that I often use, but it's quite interesting to, to draw like this. And as you see, I'm not resting my hand on the paper to draw. Once I rest my hand on the paper, it limits the size of the marks I can make. But as soon as I release my hand from the paper, um, I can draw in a much more free way. I'm sort of making little feathery marks. I know quite often when people are sketching, I think um, this is a sort of a, a feeling that I'm sketching. It, it doesn't have to be, but it's quite interesting to try making these little short feathery marks and see what um, what texture the, the shape feels like. This feels like I'm making a, a soft fluffy ball, whereas just doing this feels like a, a harder edged Hard, harder surface because it's got a harder edge. These little scratchy lines sort of make a fluffy edge. So 2B, 3B. No, sorry, what's that? No, that is a 3B. Let's get us an even softer one. Uh, 6B, and <laughs> that makes more of a, a difference. There we are. Soft and fluffy. A coloured pencil. 
So, a watercolour pencil. I could dip this watercolour pencil in some ink, see what happens. It's a combination of inky line and blue watercolour pencil line, sort of twisting the pencil as it goes. So this is just a free mark making exercise to explore a range of drawing tools. And this is a, a drawing pen. These tend to work better, of course, if they're pointing down so that gravity will feed the ink into the nib. As soon as you hold them pointing upwards like that, you'll tend eventually to run out of ink in the nib. So it's probably best to keep it pointing down or to draw with your, your pad flat. And uh, a felt pen. Now I do have a bit of a, a shake in my hands these days, which I've come across with students before and they've tried to, like, it, it's been frustrating to try and control that, that shakiness. But if you've got it, you've got it. And, you know, look at it. See what the mark looks like, allowing yourself to, to have that shake or the, the dither. It doesn't, it makes quite a nice expressive line, I feel. It's part of you. Each mark you make is a, is a record of the movements that you make. Only you can make these particular movements. It is you. Your drawing is yourself. So, um, let's think now about how you select lines in a face. Because, of course, what you see is light and shade. Um, and we'll, we'll, come, we'll come on to that in the next video about using shade. But I really want to just reduce... Um, my drawing this time to using lines. But where do you find lines? I mean, it's it's often said there are, there are no lines in nature, but of course you can make lines. There are lines in drawings and why not do line drawing for any subject? Landscape, plants or faces. Um, I suppose I've had quite a lot of practice at drawing. So when I, when I made this drawing, um, I was used, just using line in a natural way to describe three-dimensional forms. You can use lighter lines and darker lines, but it's sometimes quite difficult to decide where you want to put a line um, in, a, in a face. And I thought it might be helpful to you to show you a technique where you can create a transfer drawing <clears throat> from a photograph. So these are some that I've, I've done previously where I've taken a, a newspaper photograph. I've rested my paper on an inked up surface and then used a biro to draw the lines in the face, just a few lines to describe the face. And on the back of the piece of paper that this is taped to, I get a really interesting line drawing, which I could then do a drawing from. I could do a drawing from this drawing. Here's, here's one I worked on from a famous painting. And there's there's line, but there's also tone and colour in this one. Anyway, I'll show you how that was done. I've got some photographs of myself. Um, when, I'm, when I'm taking photos to send to the grandchildren, I, I often pull funny faces. Um, I think this is another thing which will help you to not take this topic too seriously. So if you can do a bit of gurning <laughs> to, to your to your camera, um, take some take some funny pictures. It's you know, this is my selfie. Uh, nice smile for the camera, but I think perhaps it's a more fun to do one where there's a bit of um, a silly facial expression. It's up to you. You use what you want to use, but I'm going to use this one, and. In order to, to do a line drawing from this photograph, I want to do my the transfer technique just to begin with, just to sort of distill it into lines and then I can do a drawing from the transfer. Um, it's like a print that, that I'm going to do. So I've got, instead of using uh, uh, 
t sticky ink or oil paint to do this technique with. I found it works very well with oil pastels. So I can see through this printer paper as to where the, the face is. There it is. So what I'm going to do is to put oil pastel on the back of the print. Use a single dark colour or a number of colours. Let's put some blue, Prussian blue with that as well. Or you could use black. You don't have to fill in all the gaps, but put a, put a reasonably good layer of pastel, oil pastel. Doesn't work. This does not work with chalk pastel, just in case you're wondering. But of course, you should try it and see, just in case you can make it work. I'm only speaking from my own experience. You might find chalk pastel, soft pastels, or charcoal works for you. Give it a go. So I've got plenty of pastel on the back of my photograph, and what I'll do. This. Let's um, let's tape it on. Okay. In a bit of masking tape, tape it on here. Uh, now I've got a, a hard pencil just to trace it down with. Now, of course, it's it's not just tracing because I'm going to I'm going to select. It's um, you can see on where's he gone? Um, this one. How uh, there was a lot more information. He he had his hand up by his face. I decided to ignore that. I selected out most of his hair. I just wanted to concentrate on his uh, features and the chin and the his smile lines and his frown lines so that act of being selective is you know you're taking ownership of the, the the drawing it is a drawing it's not just a tracing if you see what i mean so i shall select and this this is a good slowing down exercise as well i shall select the bits that I want to use. You can tell by my voice that um, drawing is taking place because as in the Hockney quote that I read out, line drawing re does require quite a, a bit of concentration. Now I can have a peep to see how that's going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speeding up a little bit here. Those, the glasses were perhaps a bit more difficult to uh, to do or challenging. It's probably quite a good way to get a likeness. Um, to work like this. And it'll also help to identify how little information you need to, to get the likeness of a person. I think one of, the, one of the most important things in portraiture is proportion. The proportions between the eyes and between the eyes and the nose, the nose and the mouth. And you may 
you may come across um, lots of instructions on how to draw faces and it gives you the, uh, it's, it's true, the, the, um, the proportions that, for example, between the chin and the crown of the head, the eyes fall halfway between the top of the head and the chin. And the end of the nose is approximately halfway between the eyes and the chin. And the mouth is approximately halfway between the nose and the chin. That's all useful as long as you're drawing somebody from straight on, looking straight at you. But as soon as somebody pulls a silly face or, um, or tilts their head back, you, you get everything changes and alters. So although it's useful to remember that the eyes are perhaps much lower in the head than you think you know just be be aware that that that's not always what you'll be drawing so for example here the eyes are about in the in sort of sort of towards the top third of my face because I've pulled my chin down. <laughs> Silly faces for the grandchildren. It's not me yet. I've not found that thing. What is the thing that makes it me? Whoa, what a big chin. start adding to the transfer. So you can decide whether to draw directly from the mirror, from a photograph of yourself or from a photograph of somebody else or um, a magazine photograph or anything like that. It's entirely your choice. Or maybe do a study of a piece of work by an artist whose work you love and respect.